Let's test Daedric weapons against a variety of enemies. Fire! Well, Briarhearts and Draugr didn't seem to be much of a problem. Let's test this against high-level vampires. Yep, not much of a problem. How about, uh, wolves? Yep, pit wolves, also easy. This is a neat little location, and I get this as a quest. But I also know that there is one of the instruments for the Bard's College is also here. And while you're here, this is not a glitch or an exploit. This is a portal, and it's a uh, portal that allows you to go back and forth between this location and a specific location in the game. And um, yeah, it works just fine as designed. Not even going to try to pronounce that. But there is a um, if you just go in to this portal and go to the, the uh, treasure location, you can pick up some loot. And uh, if you don't go past this location where the loot is, you're perfectly safe. If you go just a little bit past this location, um, you're going to find yourself in a fight. So some nice gold and you know some nice other stuff and not bad. I, I like this character. I've used her as a follower. I like low-level followers. And I, th I think I've had her as a steward in my Hearthfire homes. I just uh, put her in evasion armor, and she's just cool to have around. All right, then. So we want to... Um, I always want to get this home in Riften because I just really like it. Splendid! There's a house available right now. There's a great follower. Level 50. Really good. The Jarl has appointed me to be your house, Carl. And this is a great home as well. And one of the cool things is you can come out here and just relax and enjoy a great view and great music. Okay, so what's the point of this episode? The, the next level that I want to take, Lasgar, is I want to get the permanent buff, the Blessings of Dabella, and I want to get um, heavy armor and two-handed and block as high as possible. I want to get heavy armor to 100. So I could go stand in front of bandits or something, but I'm just buying training. And I want to get enchanting to 100 so that I can enchant gear. And I want to see how deadly I can make these weapons with enchanting and two-handed to 100. All right, then.
So I'm going to pretend that I'm leveling Restoration, which I am. And I've never really used these spells before. Uh, turn Undead and Destruction and, you know, some of the offensive magic. I've never really been into uh, offensive magic spells that do damage. But this is fun. I mean, I know I, I should do a group of skeletons to if I'm going to level this. But uh, I'm, I'm enjoying tormenting, the, tormenting this guy. Now, the, the problem that you have with two-handed and, and with one-handed is it takes forever to level from 90 to 100. It is just... You have to kill every living thing in the game and have the lover's comfort bonus to do it. Sometimes he goes out that door, which is always fun. So, if you kill things with anything other than two-handed, you're going to just have a harder time getting to, to 100. And I really want the level 100 two-handed perk, which is 25% more damage, which is huge. It's a huge amount of damage. The other thing I want is I want the Blessings of Debella. If you're playing a female character, one of the things that you should do is get the Blessings of Debella. It gives a buff to combat when you're fighting males. And since, what, 80% of the enemies you fight will be male, that means you're going to have, you know, a huge buff to most of your combat. So that was fun to hit that guy with destruction, but basically I just stole points from two-handed by doing that, so it's not really a good idea. It's fun, but it's not a good idea. And I can't play Destruction for more than 15 minutes, and I'm bored out of my mind. So, there's that. So anyway, 99% um, of the uh, bosses are male. So, it, it, it happens all the time that um, people ask, why do men play female characters? Well, I'm a power gamer, and, and I'm unapologetic about being a power gamer. And if I can get a 5% or a 10% bonus for fighting all of my enemies, then I'm going to pick that race or that sex of that character. It's the same reason I'm playing an orc right now. I want the damage that orcs do, and I want to see how that turns out in playing the game. Um, now, I'm also role-playing Lasgar, and she's a really interesting character. But the reason I'm playing an orc is because I'm a power gamer, and I want to see how much damage I can deal. And it's also why she's a two-handed character, is I want to see how much damage it is possible to do in the course of a game if you really focus on damage output. And I'm a long way from being done. I really like this quest, by the way. This is, this is one of the coolest locations. So cool. And I'm playing with my new toy of Sunfire, which, I've, which I just don't use, Sunfire. 2,500 hours of plus of Requiem and Skyrim and just never used offensive magic. So I'm trying to level block. And heavy armor. And I'm, I am trying to level restoration. It turns out restoration is not important for, for this build. But I think I need power of life, so I want to get to 50. But it turns out you don't need it. It's not it's not in any way useful for this build. Complete waste of perks. I mean it is insurance if things would go very badly, but you don't need it. Power Bash, on the other hand, is perfect for this build. I'm surprised I got a kill animation because I have that turned off. Now this is really interesting because the third perk in Power Bash allows you to do extra damage when you Power Bash, which is much better with a shield than with a two-handed sword. And you can also disarm your enemies. So um, I've included this so you can see how that looks when you disarm your enemy. You can also knock them down if you happen to get that as a result. Which is cool. You're, you're more likely to see it with a shield. Oop, and he dropped the weapon. That's cool. 
to, but is it necessary? No, you, you stagger your enemy so badly that it's not necessary. Yeah, I also want the white file because that allows you to do double damage and that stacks on top of the uh, Berserker Rage which then gives you, you know, that's four times damage. That's an enormous amount of damage. So that's what I want. And, and I think the white file is particularly deadly when you use it with a two-handed weapon because two-handed weapons do so much damage out of the box anyway okay for those who don't know that the exit to this place is right next to the word wall not everybody knows that so showing you that handy trick just patience the second is a what you did Oh, sweet divines, you did. There is no I do the um, Bard's College quests so I can turn in the musical instruments and get um, all kinds of levels uh, from that because you get, I think you get an entire level um, across um, a whole bunch of skills. So all of the thief skills for one of the instruments and all the warrior skills for another instrument and all the mage skills for the last instrument. And they're easy to get. And so this is where I am with this character now. So those uh, quests are worth a lot of experience. And then once you do anything for the Bard's College, um, they, they want you to have all of the stuff they have lying around. And, and I'm nearly broke. I'm down to my last 78,000. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm appreciate, I appreciate the 179 septums they just gave me. Thank you. The courier must have found you. Yes, old friend. I'm afraid it's not good news. And you thought I was just a pretty face. More vampires, and vampires don't do well against Daedric Greatswords. So yeah, I, I play all of these games, I've noticed, um, that the things I like about them are exploring first and looting second. And fighting is down the list somewhere. I like building things uh, more than fighting. So, which is weird because Bethesda makes basically first-person shooters with an overlay of some dialogue, and they've they've talked about this. That's that's what they do, and w which is fine by me. I mean that that's great as long as they give me plenty of stuff to explore. Whoop! There is a trap that has hit me a few times in the past. Um, they give me plenty of stuff to explore and loot. I'm, I'm happy. And the whole point of things like Requiem is to put a role-playing uh, template over top of what is basically a first-person shooter. With a bunch of step-and-fetch-it quests. I figured out pretty quickly that I don't need to enchant my two-handed weapon with fire. Normally I enchant my one-handed weapons, and I almost always play one-handed weapons. Um, I think this is my first two-handed character. Um, this is um, uh, something you just don't need to do if you're going to get two-handed Daedric weapons. One-handed weapons, probably enchant them with fire is great for the undead, vampires, and so on. But two-handed weapons is 
you just don't need to put any enchant on a two-handed Daedric weapon. I, I guess you could do more damage, or you could absorb stamina or health or something. But you, it, once you get this armor set, I, I don't. You don't need anything. So one of the cool things about this quest is after you complete it, you get the Shield of Solitude, which has a 30% MR uh, buff on it, which this character doesn't need. Um, I want to get to 75 so I can get 30 MR, but this character doesn't need it. I only have 10 in alteration, 10 MR, and that's fine. Um, the So the 30 is pretty pointless. But once you turn in the quest, a couple of things happen. First of all, you get uh, get to loot this uh, loot. You get to uh, Anders gives you all this garlic, which is a great thing, and he also has lots of cheese. So uh, I'm very happy because I get to take cheese and garlic, and that always makes me very happy. And he also has uh, money he wants you to have in uh, cupboards and drawers, and he has chests that you can look in. And anytime I can look in a chest and get stuff, I'm really happy. I think we shall have You've done a great thing. And then I talk to this guy, Without and there's all kinds of stuff in the palace you can yes. take if you haven't already taken Make it. Make no mistake, we consider you as as a protector of solitude. Of so you get the shield, and you also then get to, to buy the house in solitude. And... Uh, Five thousand dollars for this quest, and that, or septums, and that's that's really cool. And I, I, the house in solitude is my favorite home. If you've never played the live another life option, where you get the house in solitude at the start of the game, I highly recommend it. It is a great start. It is a great home. It's, it's I really like that home. It, it's one of my favorite. So I always come here and kill the giant slaughterfish. Uh, I don't want to swim in the water to aggro it like I normally do because I'm in heavy armor. I'm a little slow. I'm not a Khajiit. So it looks like the Wabajack has been nerfed against the giant slaughterfish, so I'm going to go find it. But then something finds me. I hate the horse AI in Skyrim. I have my horse set to cowardly. He should be running away, and he's standing there like like an idiot. Um, so I, I need to lead the dragon away from the horse because the horse will get itself killed. I hate that. I, I That is a mechanic that is just absolutely, completely broken. Everything is supposed to be afraid of dragons, and the game is set that everything is afraid of dragons and the horse is just standing there watching a dragon fly around and throw fire and frost balls around it's just stupid so uh that's a mechanic just drives me nuts even with uh, my follower or my horse mod that sets my horse to cowardly it, it clearly isn't working for some reason he should be running away That is a completely broken mechanic, and an infuriating one. So this is really neat. I, I love the fact that I can't find this dragon. Not, not having the HUD on is a terrific idea. Now he's either fighting mud crabs or he's fighting the giant slaughterfish. I'm not sure. 
And I can't shoot him at this distance. That's too far a distance. But I really like the fact that I, I can't... I don't know where he is if I can't see him. That is really cool. Usually I, I play with the HUD on, and playing with it off is just so much more fun. That feeling of not knowing... You can hear the dragon, but you can't see him. Uh, and, and you can't tell where he is by looking at the screen. So you have to run to keep from being hit. And at the same time, you're looking for him. So I, I flash the HUD on to... Is he still around? Where is he? To have some clue of where to go. But it's really neat not knowing. And not knowing if you're about to get hit or he's about to land on top of you. It's so much more uh, fun and experience. Now, I know this dragon's going to fly around and fight every skeever and mud crab in this area. So I have to do something to get his attention and get him to fight me and stop flying around in circles. I think it's also really cool that uh, if you're a melee character, um, you just stand and get hit from... He just hits you from the sky. He just flies around and hits you with fireballs or frost. And and it's and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't really strike back. It's a dragon. It should be able to do that. So the flame Atronach is supposed to be attracting the dragon. Getting the dragon to come after me. And yeah, my only defense is just to run and try not to get hit. Which is very cool. You have to keep moving to keep from being hit. But I really don't want the dragon just to fly off. If if, if he becomes disconnected, if he gets away, he's going to fly away and you're going to lose this. That was great. He he launched back into flight, and I missed the shot. That that was very cool. But I, but I don't want him to go away. I don't want him to go off chasing skeevers and disappear. Also, the the flame atronach should give me an idea where he is. So. If, I should be able to watch where the fireballs are headed and have some idea of where this guy is, because most of the time I'm running around, I don't know where he is unless his shadow is flying over top of me or something, which is kind of eerie. I really want to hit this guy now. Five. And I'm doing things out of order because I'm not used to using shouts, but um, the idea is to take the potion first and then do become ethereal. And I do it in the reverse order, which screws up become ethereal. That Warhammer with Berserker Rage is just an awesome dragon killer. That is that is just amazing.
I don't know if he was he was stagger locked, but he was paralyzed maybe, and he did almost no damage to me. That's that's remarkable. It's at this moment that Lasgar really comes into her own, where she really kind of becomes the character that I wanted her to be. She is powerful. She's awesome. Look at her walking there. I mean, she just looks great. She's filled with confidence. She's deadly. She's very deadly. She's an orc. Um, she's an amazing fighter. And she just killed a dragon with a warhammer. She's an awesome character. Here's one of my favorite things in the game, and no game is complete without this. The giant slaughterfish. Nice ingredients. I think that... I, I'm not sure. I think the dragon might have killed it. That is just a thing of great beauty. I must have taken... Uh, I took dozens of screenshots of this. This is just... This looks so cool. One of my favorite things in Requiem. When I found out Minor Arcana takes the giant slaughterfish away, I my first thought was I'll never play that mod. I really like the giant slaughterfish. I also like the giant mud crab. So I've now killed enough undead. I can get the max uh, blessings from RK. Now hitting the shrine will also take off the um, the beef stew buff. So anyway, that's what that's the effect that it has now. And heavy armor finally got to ninety. I want to get the Savior's Hide, and the reason is that Samur please the great series that he did, which was a huge inspiration for me even trying this character in this build. Um, he went on and on about how Savior's Hide is, you know, the best look for an orc. And uh, so I'm going to put Lasgar in the Savior's Hide, and, and it is true, it looks great. Um, it turns out the Savior's, Savior's Hide is a terrible piece of armor. Uh, but I'm going to have her wear the Savior's Hide just because it looks very cool. Hey, watch it. Turns out Daedric weapons are really good against werewolves. Particularly with Berserker Rage. Well, Hunter. And found my favor. That skin will serve you well, child. Look more closely at it. My glory shall protect you from all this world's grievances. Good hunting. Yeah, I wanted to get this for a quest that I'm going to do uh, later, where the lighter weight um, and the buffs on this armor I thought might be useful and I thought also it would be cool to do a quest where she just looked like a very badass um, orc and, and she does look really cool in this armor uh, but this armor is she should never wear this to fight she's a heavy armor character and um, 
wearing this armor set is a complete waste of time. Here's the uh, Debella quest, and again, this is for female characters, this is a huge buff, and this is the strongest reason why I play female characters. I want, I want the buff in combat. So you take the enormous damage these two-handed weapons are doing, are you doing and then you multiply that times uh, this buff, which I think is 10%. And that's the real damage I'm doing against male characters, which, you know, is just an amazing amount of damage. I'm thinking this guy should help me level block. Oh, he'll drop one of his weapons when I hit him. I think you're bleeding. Yeah, power bash, and he drops a weapon. Very cool. I, I should have power bashed him again to get him to drop the second weapon. But I, I'm just, you know, when I power bash somebody, I'm, I just didn't, just out of habit, just hit them a second, you know, hit them with a swing. I can't believe it. Yeah, the, the other reason to play uh, female characters is um, I like looking at females, and I don't like looking at men. It's uh, I'm hardwired that way. I can't change it. And, um, the, so I, I kind of get more into female characters because I kind of enjoy them more and I enjoy looking at them more and, um, role-playing them more for some reason. Um, they're just more fun. I, I get bored with male characters and I, I never role-play myself anyway. So that's, you know, out of the question. That's never going to happen. So, um, role-playing a female is just more interesting. Role-playing a crazy female is really fun. A complete psychopathic female is somehow a really fun game. More than role-playing a psychopathic male player. Alexander Sha, Sha Sha, um, used unrelenting force in this quest when he played a heavy armor uh, character. And... Uh, so I thought I would do that too, kind of as a little salute to his great playthroughs that were also a huge inspiration. There was a day when, you know, it was just uh, Than A to Z and Alexander Shah and a couple of other guys in the early days of Requiem, and those were the only videos out there. I remember those days. Now there are so many great video series that have been done by great Requiem players. And, uh, you know, I enjoy them all. I, I enjoy all the videos and all of the um, series that have been done. Yeah, fire works really good to uh, aggro characters that are far away. So that, that's pretty cool. I'm finding out new method, new uh, uses for destruction magic. I'm trying to branch out a little bit and try new things.
It takes a very long time to level heavy armor to 100. And this place has lots of garlic in it, which is always a good thing. I want these guys, I don't want to go charging in there and kind of end up in the middle of them. I want them to be kind of in a line, one right behind the next. And uh, I'm pretty surprised. I'm doing everything to attract their attention. Um, and it looks like they're going to, like, lose, you know, the AI is going to lose where my character is. So. The only one who had a chance of uh, surviving was the guy in the very heavy armor. This is a really good armor. Now the problem with this armor is, um, as, as great as it is, and these numbers are really good, particularly for the early game, the armor is very heavy. And if you put it on at level 10, you're going to move at, I don't know, some really very, very slow speed because in the early game, you're just not going to have heavy armor high enough to be able to move uh, with a lot of weight. So you have to go with lighter armor. Um, orc armor has the same problem. It's just really heavy, and you're going to move at you know 60% speed or something. It's going to be agonizing. So here is a secret hidden treasure chest, which not everybody knows about, so I'll show it to you. Super, super secret. And you come out to this chest. And you get 51 septums. And bonus, you get uh, sacks of flour and cabbage. I'm going to have to get almost all of the word walls, and for two reasons. To kind of get a the best possible cooldown on uh, of shouts, which I want. And there are words that I specifically want, and I, I go hunting for those. But the other thing is, I have to um, kill almost every draugr and skeleton in the game to get two-handed to 100. And... I'm going to show you how I do that uh, later on, which is um, I basically turn the map on and I go in, uh, to every place where there's Draugr and kill them. Because you have to kill like every living and undead thing in Skyrim. So at this point in the quest, you get to get uh, all the garlic in here, which is really good. Because it makes everything taste so much better. So... And there's salt. Bonus. So, and carrots. I need carrots. So then go back into this. I, I like this um, little trap right here. This is very cool.
Sunfire is really fun. I've never really played with it before, but it's really kind of fun. Everything I kill with Sunfire is just one more target that I don't get any experience for two-handed. And you need every point of two-handed that you can get. So, I don't know if you can see it, but did you notice the trap over there to the right? Yeah, me either. I have walked into that trap so many times. It's right there. And I've done this quest many times and almost walked into it again. It's, it's, it, you come around the corner and you can step right into it. it. Now, with this armor, she would have survived, but I usually play evasion characters. And that trap is a problem for evasion characters. I'm dead. Because you, you just forget that it's there, so... Yeah, I've been hit by that thing a couple times. You can actually kill Draugr. Well, you can kill enemies with Power Bash. It does do some damage. Might as well level alteration while I'm doing this. So here's a word that I definitely want for this character. Yeah, I usually don't use um, many shouts during the course of a game, so I'm trying to do some things a little bit differently. I'm trying to use shouts more often, and it, and it takes an effort to do it because I really just want to hit things with a greatsword. I really am... I've played entire games where I didn't get any shouts and, and use any shouts. So, um, I'm trying to use shouts and I'm trying to use magic more. So, all of the Horker respawn and all of the grass pods too. So, I start off with uh, an elven greatsword to uh, do soul traps, and then I figure out I can cast, use Conjuration to cast a spell and level Conjuration too. Uh, but that's pretty much a waste of time. You don't get very much for that. But I need a bunch of soul gems. It takes a lot of soul gems to get to 100. In here is uh, an amulet of Mara, and it's always here, so you can pick it up at level one. That you can buy one in Rift in, and that's not a problem. But this is also a free bed, and if you bring your spouse with you, you can get lover's comfort from any bed, including that one. So that's a free bed, so that's not bad. So I, I let Horkers 
um, attack me for about you know it's it's a while, and I don't I don't know how long, but it was a while, and uh, it leveled heavy armor to 100. I, I just got tired of fiddling with it, and um, got tired of letting skeletons hit me with weak weapons. And I workers did a much better job, so I let four worker hit me for I don't know half an hour or an hour and got to 100 and done. So it seems to lower the weight and maybe increase the movement speed. I'd like to get movement speed to 90 if at all possible and I'll have to invest in stamina to do that. So um, it, it, you seem to move a little faster and it seems to drop the weight a little bit when you're wearing heavy armor. The level 100 heavy armor perk is nowhere near as good as the heavy as the level 100 evasion perk which is really really powerful. So movement speed is 87 which is not bad for an orc. So I'm trying to level Conjuration, get a ton of worker fat, grass pods. So while I'm doing this, I'm, I am going to give in to temptation in future games and just use Soul Tomatoes. Um, I didn't mind doing this to, to fill up Soul Gems, but um, I'm not necessarily going to do that again. I'm just going to make Soul Tomatoes and, and just kill things, and as I kill things, fill up Soul Tomatoes and level um, enchanting. So I'm investing in restoration. I think I need power of life, but I don't. Um, I would say that all of the investment I did in restoration for this character was pretty much a waste of time. Um, no more than one perk was really necessary. So, But I wanted uh, focused mind and power of life, and I got it here. So I was very happy with that at the time. But really, it's a waste of perks. You, just, you, you don't need it. But, you know, the power of life is 5,000 health over 12 seconds, so it's, a, it's an insurance policy. And I'm only going to the sophisticated level in spells. Uh, I only want to put two perks in the left side of the uh, heavy armor tree and um, again is it is it really worth it uh, I don't think so I don't think it does that much So that's the last perk in Heavy Armor. And so we get um, Mage Armor of almost 150. And I am trying to see how high I can get my armor in this game. And so this is, you know, part of it, is to get uh, Mage Armor, uh, get a life insurance policy with Restoration, which is Power of Life, and then with Enchanting, uh, seeing how much I can improve my armor. And, and my weapons, too. 
So you can uh, lockpick these locks. Um, nobody minds because um, if you deliver the sword or do something nice for these people, they let you do that. And I go around and pick locks for a while and get to 100. So picked up a few, a uh, bit of worker fat and grass pods. And uh, but when I make potions, I want them to be with alchemy enchanting gear. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm not going to enchant my weapons, but um, I do want alchemy and smithing enchanted gear. And um, I'm going to show you getting from 99 to 100. You can count these. I think it's seven. Seven enchants, and that's pretty much what you have to do for one level um, after 90. So getting to level 50 is about uh, 50 soul gems. And getting from 90 to 100 is about is more. It's about 70 soul gems. So the highest level enchant I've ever been able to get is 13% on this gear. So I'm going to enchant for alchemy and smithing, and I also want to make um, uh, rings of uh, magic resistance and two-handed weapon damage. And then I'll switch back and forth between those two rings depending on what I need. So then, after I do this, I can go and improve my armor and weapons and see what the new level of protection and damage Lasgar can come up with. And the magic resistance of 21% is a slight improvement over the ring that I had. So with the two-handed ring that I made, which has a very good enchant on it, uh, this is the damage I now have. Look at that silver greatsword. And then you had stack 50% more against the undead. That's a really great weapon, and boy, that battle axe does some damage. And here is the now improved uh, armor, 1205. And the Daedric um, armor is also really, really good, but it's very, very heavy. And if I add the alteration protection on top of it, in this phase, we have managed then to get to 1352. But we're not done. We're going to get better weapon damage and better armor damage in the next phase. And uh, stay tuned. I'll show you how to do that. Thanks.